We're going to spend some time now talking about the diagrams, their combination of electrical and hydraulic. After we finish this, we'll spend more time looking at hydraulic. This particular case happens to be pneumatic because it's a heavy-duty brake pressure control system. It's a Bendix ABS and traction control system. Let's put a little color here so we can see this better. Let me explain what we're looking at here. You've got four bullets showing controlled pressure front and rear. The ABS is highlighted in yellow in the middle. The yellow lines are the control signals going to those air pressure regulators, which regulate and give us that controlled red pressure. Now, right now, the controlled red pressure does not mean high, low, or anything. It's simply saying that is the pressure that can be controlled by the air pressure modulator. Let's go look at this in a little more detail. Here's the trailer version of ABS. Notice the arrows pointing to a combination, modulator and ABS control ECU. So it's all rolled into one. The red line is the controls going to the front brakes. The, the light blue is the uh, controlled pressure going to the wheels. It comes directly out of the modulator in the rear and the red information is relayed to the modulator in front to give us controlled air pressure. So now we have pressure controlled on the tractor and the trailer. Let's look at this in a little more detail of why we need to control pressure. Remember, we got here because we had a speed difference. And this ABS will modify brake pressure to correct for speed difference. In this particular example, we've been using the right rear wheel is too slow. It's slowing too quickly. It's not in, in sync with the other wheels. And this was enough to give us the onset of ABS. Now let's review how we got here. The wheel speed sensors reported one or more wheels going slower than the average vehicle. The ECU took a calculation and determined that the range of the slip fell within ABS control range. Now we're into applying hydraulic or pneumatic, depending on the application, controls to modify the pressure on the brakes to increase the wheel speed and correct for the underspeed condition. This is a block diagram again. We're looking at that red blinking indication back there on the right rear wheel of this tractor. It's going to reduce the pressure in order to do that. Let's talk about how we do that. We're going to reduce the pressure on these two wheels because that is the area that's controlled. There's one modulator for two wheels. What we're going to do here is we are going to use a modulator valve. You've got an air supply in. We've got valves inside that we can control. It has an exhaust port for relieving pressure if we need to vent pressure. And then it's got an output delivery port to the pair of wheels in the back. Now, this is the typical modulator. happens to be a, 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 a Bendix because we had it available. Let's talk about what this is going to do because all ABS systems are going to use this same scenario. It's actually quite simple on a truck because we've got to do two things. We have an air supply coming in. So what we can do to that air supply, we can go in and we can isolate the brakes from the air source. That's where we always have to start. Whether we're doing air or hydraulic, the first step of ABS control is to isolate the brakes from the source. The second thing, if we have the wheels going too slow, we reduce pressure. The third step, we have an option. We can hold the reduced pressure or we can return to normal. The system has to decide. Once it turns off, the reduced pressure solenoid, the dump solenoid, outlet solenoid, or valve, whatever you want to call it, we're going to hold that pressure, but if it looks normal and the brake speed is normal, we return to normal and everything goes back to where it was. Now, these three steps we're going to use on everything. It's actually a lot more complicated on cars than it is on trucks. Why? We'll show you why here. So what we've done now just to renew this, we have individual components located near the wheels. 
we used one of those components on the right rear to reduce brake pressure. Cars are a little more complicated. Here's an example on the left. We have an integrated ABS controller. It's called an electrohydraulic unit. It's got the electronics, the solenoids. It's got pumps, pressure transducers, and a lot of other things. We're going to go into that in more detail later. But now we've covered the system, the way it works with air pressure.